A lot better and sorry, just trying to see if I'm filming myself here or not. It's hard when you're a one-man show trying to make these videos here. Um, but yeah, maybe I should start over. <coughs> Ay vey. Hey everyone, and thanks again for joining me. My name's Matt, and I'm sorry for the little bit of a break that I've been on recently with not posting any of these videos for a while there. I was making them pretty consistently, but I know it's been a few weeks since I last posted one. I certainly have a good excuse. One second here, I just want to grab my notes so I don't forget what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so <laughs> reason why that I kind of took a little bit of a break from making the videos, or reason why you haven't heard from me in a little bit of time is because last week was when I had to take my test to see if I passed my real estate class. So I was very busy studying for that exam. I was spending, geez, I was like waking up at 6.30 in the morning, generally starting and studying around 8 and would go till about 5 o'clock at night or so, give or take. Ultimately just treating it kind of like a job again, just to make sure that I was fully prepared for this exam because if I didn't pass it, then I would have to take the class over again. Uh, brief kind of summary for the way North Carolina operates is in North Carolina, you have to take your 75 hour prereq class. And then at the end, you're given like an end of grade exam that you have to pass. And if you pass that, then you're able to actually take the real exam. And if you don't pass it, you get another try. Don't pass it on your second try, then you have to start, start all over again. So I wanted to make sure I was spending enough time focusing on this exam, not having to start over again, making sure that, you know, come the test time, I would be ready to go so that this way I don't have to spend the money again, the time again, and just ultimately be able to launch myself into my real estate career even sooner. So good news is I did pass the test on the first go around. So that was pretty exciting and very encouraging for me, at least just to know that you know, North Carolina has one of the hardest real estate exams in the country. Some people say it's the hardest. I've only taken this one, so I don't have anything to compare it to or anything like that. But, um, you know, it made me feel pretty good knowing that I was able to pass the class on the first try. Uh, didn't have to retake the class. And now I'm actually starting the process of being able to take the official exam. Now, once you pass the official exam in North Carolina is when you're able to become a provisional broker um, and you know work with a work with somebody in real estate and uh, you know work towards removing that provisional status from your license. Basically, provisional means you need a babysitter. Simple as that. Um, a few things about the exam I do want to say is yes, it was very it was a hard test. If I had to compare it to something like the Series 7, I would say the Series 7 was harder than the real estate exam. But, you know, at the end of the day, they're both standardized tests. So you have to just make sure not only you know the material, but you're able to apply it, which is the big difference between tests you might have taken in college or in school if you haven't done one of these licensing exams. Um, because they're more there to test you on your ability to apply it rather than just can you, you know, repeat back to me what I said to you kind of the way I would look at it. So if any of you are studying for the exam, uh, try to just understand that when you go through it and just know that it's not there to just make sure you know your vocabulary words, but it'll give you real life situation of, you know, uh, they're way too long to actually give an example, but you'll, you'll see what I mean if you're taking, I don't want to continue on that too long. Um, but now that I'm done with that class portion of it, I do want to say that I was taking my class through Superior School of Real Estate in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, which I would highly recommend. Again, I've only taken the one class as my only experience with it. But the reason why I like Superior is because it was a month's time frame. Now, it was a little bit more expensive than if you were to go through like a community college or maybe another program that might be out there. Um, but it was only a month. So I was able to get it done relatively quickly as opposed to where if I took it out like CPCC, um, where it would have taken anywhere from two months to about a semester. And I just didn't want to spend that much time going through these classes again, kind of learning everything, um, you know, and just ultimately again, being able to launch myself into that career as soon as possible. The other thing I could say, two other things actually about the classes, I took mine with Bruce Moyer. 
uh, he was my teacher for the class and he was great, very helpful, gave a lot of good examples on ways that you can easily understand the topics, but then also to, you know, some of the stories he told or the examples he gave were things that come test time, you know, I was going through and I was able to remember his story saying, oh, okay, well, here's what he told me, you know, so that's why I know this is the answer because here's what happened. Don't know if that really makes a lot of sense, but, you know, having somebody that can provide the experience or somebody that can give real life examples just really helps you be able to start that process of being able to apply the information rather than just understanding you know the core basics of it the other thing that really helped me though with the real estate exam studying for it uh, especially in north carolina is there's a guy on youtube his name is travis everett i watched like all of his videos uh, just to hear a different perspective. I'm a big believer in hearing other perspectives and you know other people's ways of describing something because sometimes people just have an easier way to understand it. And when you're trying to take in you know 20 chapters worth of material in a month's time frame, hearing different perspectives is going to be very helpful, at least for me, because this way I was able to kind of learn the material a little bit quicker than if I was reading the same textbook, hearing the same teacher over and over again. And you know, if you get to that point where if you don't understand something, that's where I think it's very helpful to look towards outside resources. But now that that test is over with, like I said, I just got my background check cleared today, so I'm able to actually apply for the test itself, which is honestly more important for me to pass on the first try, I guess, because this one is uh, gonna cost $163, and it's $163 regardless how many times you take it so each time is 163 dollars so i don't want to just dump a bunch of money into these tests i swear from my experience of taking these exams this being my now my third licensing exam i wish i had an idea of making one of these licenses because they just make must make so much money you know off retakes and courses and application fees and renewal fees and Ah, uh, man, if anybody has an idea out there for a real estate, or not a real estate exam, but just any license, insurance, you know, something, definitely get that going because you can make so much money. I know like the CFA costs like $6,000. That is crazy just so you could take a test. That's a lot of money. But, you know, it gets you the certification. So, sorry, a little kind of rant there, a little tangent. Um... But yeah, now that I passed the exam, I'm waiting to find out when I'm able to take the real exam so I can get my license. And in the meantime, what I'll be doing is just working towards starting the interview process with other firms, trying to figure out who's going to be the best one for me, which ones you know I feel like I'm a good fit for, uh, and who's going to be the best one for me to affiliate with. Because when you're new, I know from you know what my teachers have said and the people that have come in and talked to my classes, they all say that you know you have to find one whose core values meet yours so you know if you're uh, everybody should be an ethical person but you know making sure every you know dot your i's and cross your t's is obviously something that i would like um, but you know obviously too finding somebody who's not going to take too much away from my commission just for their money or for their profitability so we'll see how that goes and i'll definitely provide some updates with all of that as we kind of move forward throughout the rest of this um, might probably go on another hiatus for a little bit while I study for the real exam just to get the studying portion out of the way. I know it's not something that you ever stop studying because continuing education is a requirement, but um, and I enjoy learning about it. But you know, for now, just to get my license, get all that squared away, and actually get into the industry, uh, it's definitely my main focus. And you know, I'm just kind of ready to get all this over with so I can get back to working again, working in real estate though, not in finance. Um, Kind of a cool thing though that happened to me after I passed the test is, so the way Superior does it is you do a Scantron test, fill it out, hand it in, and you gotta wait until you get the email from them saying if you passed or failed. And so I was nonstop checking my email right after the exam, like, you know, wow, did I pass, did I pass, did I pass? And I probably checked my email about 30 times in an hour before I just had to hand my phone over to my girlfriend and say, you take over from here because I can't just keep up with this. Um, but one of those times while I was checking my email, I actually got an email from uh, a teacher from my high school or somebody who works there uh, asking if I wanted to go back to my high school tomorrow, Thursday, uh, to actually 
talk about my experiences since high school. You know, what have I done since then? Where did I go to college? How was college? How did I pick a degree? What am I doing now? Uh, all that good stuff. And I'm very excited about this. It's actually something that I enjoy doing. It's just kind of giving my background experience because I didn't take a very, if you saw my first video, I didn't take a very traditional approach towards anything, really. Um, you know, I just kind of, brief synopsis, you know, went to community college for a year, went to ECU for three years, finished college in four years, you know, got a job right out of college, was a top performer, for lack of a better phrase, in my company, uh, and just decided to take matters into my own hands. And that's something that I think is a lot different, especially in today's day and age, as you hear, like, should I go to college? It's so expensive. What do I do? What are the options? So I hope that this is going to be a good opportunity for me to shed light on my experiences to others, and hopefully a few of them, even if it's just one person, can relate to me and, you know, I can give them a little motivation for not telling them what they should and shouldn't do because I want that to always be their decision. But hopefully I can give them that kind of guidance of just saying, you know, the future is full of ambiguity. So don't try to plan it all out and, you know, just kind of let it ride. That's really kind of what I've done. And ultimately it's worked out. Now I work hard during those times of figuring it out and what's going to be the best and making those decisions is hard. But, you know, life's not easy either. So we always got to just keep pushing through it and we always got to figure out what's going to be the best for us, what's going to put the biggest smile on your face at the end of the day, and what's going to give you the best sleep at night. Uh, the other thing is too that got kind of cool, or that, that got kind of cool, that was pretty cool, is uh, some of my parents know who works in the finance industry who has his own firm actually reached out to me as well to ask if I wouldn't mind going over with him what it would take to hire new people into the finance world. So taking people from high school or from college into finance and, you know, what do you look for? What are things that, you know, younger people are interested in when they're new to the world? You know, little things like that. And he very much appreciates my experience just given, you know, who I worked for. He knows the company that I... Oh, I lied. We are. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. I just... Something happened with my camera, I just wanted to make sure I was still recording. Um, but as I was saying, it's just very encouraging for me, or it's a very good sign for me to have, you know, again, same day I passed the exam, two people reaching out to me to kind of sh hear about my experience and for me to give them guidance. And again, I'm only 25. So this is pretty cool for me to now have somebody who's, you know, approaching their 60s, about mid 50s. Uh, asking for my advice and then having somebody who you know works with high school students just asking for my experience is just such an awesome feeling because if you were to ask me geez yeah you know, let's say nine years ago when I was 16 that you know what are you gonna be doing in the future I honestly couldn't even dream that I'd be at this point and not that it's anything crazy for me you know it's not that it's you know oh, I'm a millionaire and I got a sick yacht like, no, that, that'd be awesome. But that's not where I am right now. But I'm so much further ahead than I ever thought I would have been. And that just really gives me even more motivation to kind of keep pushing myself forward. Because I feel like when the future's unclear, it's like you have a blank slate. Rather than just thinking you always need, you know, you're almost going through a maze and you got to find the right way through it, you know, break down the walls and just keep going on a straight line to, you know, what your goal is. And that's kind of been my mentality. And to now see this all paying off. But at 25, to be in this position, I feel very comfortable with where things are headed for me. You know, I'm obviously not going to let any of that get to my head. I'm very much taking like a very level mindset approach here. But, you know, just keeping my eyes on the prize and keep moving forward. It's just such a good feeling because even a year ago when I was working in the finance industry, I just felt so uncertain about where things were headed, about what I was going to do with my career, what I was going to do with myself, you know, trying to figure out how am I going to pay off X, Y, Z, uh, you know, how am I going to make more money because I want to do all these cool things. And already I'm seeing a change in that, you know, where it's now I'm, I already can tell my schedule is going to be more flexible with being with real estate. Now that also means I'm going to be working harder, but that's okay because it's up to me and I'm finally getting that 
entrepreneurial approach that honestly I've wanted my entire life. Uh, even when I was a little kid, I wanted to own a Rita's. So I feel like I'm on the right path towards being my own boss, creating my own future. And I got to say, with the way things have been working out, again, it's very encouraging. Now, going through a lot of this, it has been a little tough just making sure, you know, I keep good connections with my friends, stay in touch with family, you know, don't completely isolate myself from the rest of the world. That's where it tends to be a little bit of a challenge. But, you know, I have time to recover all of that, you know, or, you know, just kind of still keep in touch or, you know, learning to keep that balance is obviously going to be something that you just learn to develop over time. So I have to say, I'm very happy with the way things have panned out for me so far. We'll see how it goes once I'm done with the actual licensing part of the, you know, real estate portion. Uh, but so far, couldn't have really asked for a better path or better way for things to have worked out being so nervous about quitting my job, not knowing where things were going. Hard part about that is definitely not having health insurance. Uh, but you know, am I really gonna give up my future because I can't go get a physical once a year? I mean, I still can get a physical, but it's just gonna cost me like 50 bucks. You know, you gotta weigh out your options in life. And I really feel like I made the right decision and it's very encouraging for me. I hope to continue making these videos more consistently than I have been, but like I said earlier, I don't think I'll be making them very consistently until I'm finished with my exam and, you know, probably will have more information once I start like affiliating, going on, you know, showing houses or doing open houses or commercial real estate or, you know, like Airbnb. So we'll see how it goes. But thanks again for taking the time uh, to watch this and kind of hear from me. And I hope you have a great rest of your week.